For today's lesson, we are going to prove and use theorems about the angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal. So we're really doing the same stuff we did last lesson, but we're just adding to it um, that the two lines that the transversal hits will be parallel. But before we do that, I'd like us to review some of the things uh, we did last time. So um, we're going to do a little warm-up. We are just going to look at this diagram and decide uh, what kind of angle pairs each of these are. So if we look at angles 1 and angle 3, we want to name that angle pair. Well, we see that they're both on the same side of the transversal, and they're both on the left side of the two lines. So those are corresponding because they're in matching positions. So we're going to call those corresponding angles. Uh, 3 and 6 we see are on alternate sides of the, two, of the transversal, but they're inside the two lines. So those are alternate interior angles. Uh, 4 and 5, these two angles are on alternate as well, but they're outside the two lines, so those are alternate exterior. And our last set, 6 and 7, those are on the same side of the transversal, but they're inside our two lines. So we're going to call those same side interior. So, um, now we're going to take what we learned and just add something about corresponding angles. So if we have our two lines, our two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and we have corresponding angles like we said before. We now have a postulate that says corresponding angles are congruent. So only if these two lines are parallel, then all of the sets of our corresponding angles will be congruent to each other. And what's it mean to be congruent? Uh, that they have equal measures. So let's use that to try an example. In this picture it says find each measure. And the first one we're looking for is E C, F. So if we just dot that, or if we connect the dots, E, C, F, we want to say, do I know what this angle right here is? Well, if I look at some of the other angles that are related to it, um, let's see, I have 5X, which makes a linear pair, but I don't know what X is. But I also see I have a corresponding angle um, that's 70. So what do we know that this angle is going to be? It's also going to be 70 degrees. Um, I wouldn't have put that x is 70 because we didn't have a variable. So that, that measure is 70 degrees. Okay, now we're going to look for d, c, e. This angle right here. Well, the picture tells me that that one is 5x. So it looks like we're probably going to have to set up an equation. So let's first find an angle that's related to d, c, e. And the one in the picture that's related is going to be this one. That's 4x plus 22. Well, the relationship between those two is that they're corresponding, and we just learned that if they're corresponding, their measures are equal because those angles are congruent. So I can take those two measures and set it equal. And now we're going to have to solve to figure out what x is so I can plug it in. So I see that I have x's on both sides, so I'm going to take the smaller one and subtract it from both sides, and that means we have x equals 22. So... Since the picture told us that DCE was 5x and x is 22, I'm going to plug 22 in for x, and we're going to get 110 degrees. Okay? So here's another one that's kind of easy. If we wanted to find QRS, okay, a big part of this is just making sure we know how to identify what angle we're talking about. So just remember to connect the dots. QRS, so we're talking about this angle right here. Notice that that is not what x is, okay? But we do know what x is because these are corresponding. So if I want to say that this one is 118 because these are corresponding, I know that x is 18. Well, if x is 18, I can see that this angle and this angle, do you see that they're adjacent angles that make a line? So those are a linear pair. Well, we learned that linear pairs add up to 180 degrees. So the angle I want plus this angle x should give me 180 because it's a straight line. So uh, we can move some things around if I want to get QRS by itself first. We can move this x over. So whatever this angle is, if I take it away from 180, um, I will get my answer. So I subtract or 118 from 180, and QRS is 62 degrees. Um, here's something else that we can use. If a transversal is perpendicular to two parallel lines, all eight angles are going to be congruent to each other. So all eight angles that are created by the transversal and the two lines, if the transversal is perpendicular, 
then all the angles are 90 degrees, so they're all congruent. Um, so we've kind of talked about what a postulate is. Just a reminder, those are statements that we are going to use as true. So like that corresponding angles postulate, we don't have to prove it because um, it's a postulate. So we can always say that it's true. So let's look at the other kind of relationships we have. Uh, when those two lines are parallel, last time we talked about alternate interior angles, but when lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are also congruent. So in this picture, angle 1 will have the same measure as angle 3, and angle 4 will have the same measure as angle 2. Um, we also have another theorem, the alternate exterior angle theorem, says if the two lines are parallel, so if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the two pairs of alternate exterior angles are also congruent. So alternate exterior angles, when lines are parallel, have equal measures. Now the only one that's different, and we've got to remember that it's different, says that same side interior angles, notice that those cannot be congruent. Angle 1 is acute. Angle 4 is obtuse. So those can't be the same. They don't even look the same. So remember that part of your common sense, that they don't look the same, chances are they're probably not equal. They are not. So same side interiors are supplementary. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the same side interior angles are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. So this is a good resource. I'd make sure I get all of those written down. Now let's look at some examples together. So our first question says to find the measure of E D, G. So if I use E, D, G here, um, I could do a couple of different things. I could set this equal to this because they're corresponding, but I think it might be easier if I look for the angle that actually has a measure. Do we see this F, B, C up here is 75? Well, what's the relationship between 75 degrees and this X minus 30, these two angles? Well, these are alternate exteriors, and I just learned that alternate exteriors have equal measures, so I don't even have to use the x um, minus 30. <clears throat> so if that's 75, then this angle is 75. So we can skip out on the variables. Anytime you can do that, I'd say go ahead, you have less to do. Okay, the next one says find the measure of b, d, g. So I want to find b, d, g. Well, there's numerous ways to go about finding that, or different relationships we can set up. Um, a couple of which, um, I could see that these two are same side interiors, add them together and set them equal to 180. I could see that these two are a linear pair, add them together and equal them to 180. Um, this x does not have a relationship to the 75. But the 75 does have a relationship to the x minus 30. So I could set these equal together and solve for x, which is what this measure's angle is. So if I said that um, I was looking at this angle and this angle, I first need to know their angle pair, which they're alternate exteriors, and we learned that that means their measures are equal. So I'll set these two equal, and if I solve for x by adding 30 to both sides, I get that x is 105 degrees. Well, since BDG's measure is X, that means that BDG's measure is also 105 degrees. All right, let's try another example. Uh, in this question, it says find the measure of ABD. And it looks like ABD's measure is 2X plus 10. Well, if I have ABD's measure and I have BDE, I first need to decide what angle pair do these two create. And I see that they're on alternate sides of the transversal, but they're both inside our two lines. So alternate interior angle theorem is what I'm going to use. And that told us that the measures of those angles were congruent, or were equal, because the angles are congruent. So I'm going to take their measures and I'm going to set them equal. And now all we're going to do is solve. So we look for our x's. We take the smaller of our two x's, since I have them on both sides, I can't combine them. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And if we do that at the same time of adding 15, since we move the x's on this side, we'll add the 15 to this side, and we'll have that x equals 25 degrees. 
Well, then I see what normally when we get to x, we're done. But the question said, what is the measure of ABD? So once I found x, I'm going to go into ABD and I'm going to plug it in. So I'm going to substitute 25 for the measure of x, and 25 times 2 plus 10 says that that measure is 60 degrees. Okay, we're going to look at one more that's kind of more of a challenge question. So notice we've got a couple more lines going through our picture uh, and quite a few more angles. And it tells us to find the measure of x and y. Well, if we first just analyze this picture, notice that L, M, and N are our parallel lines. So we want to keep those as our parallels, and we are either going to use P or Q as our transversals. Well, if we look at P first, we see that there's two angles uh, that we're given measure, measures to with P as a transversal. We have this 55, and we have this 5x plus 4y. So these two angles, if I wanted to find a relationship, I see that they're on alternate sides of my transversal. And if I use L and N as my parallel lines, they are inside. So by alternate interior angles theorem, I know that these two measures are equal. So if I tried to find something else about these other angles, if I used Q as my transversal, I see that I have an angle 60 and I have a 5x plus 5y. Well these two angles look like they're on the same side of Q, but they're both side on the left side of their or parallel lines. So I would say that those are corresponding, which tells me that those measures should also be equal. Well, it's been a long time, but in Algebra 1, you worked on systems of equations a little bit, and when we have two variables, we can uh, subtract one equation from the second or from the other. So if I took um, this equation just because the 5y is bigger, and I subtract the 5x plus 4y equals 55, uh, well, I'd subtract, subtract each piece. So 5x minus 5x goes away. 5x, 5y minus 4y gives me y, and 60 minus 55 gives me 5. So I know that y is 5, is five not degrees, just a, a number. Then I can go into either one of these measures, and I can plug in 5 for one of the equations. So I could pick either one. So if I just pick the top one, the 5x plus 5y equals 60, I'm going to plug or substitute 5 in for y. And when I do that, now I'm just going to solve. So I have 5 times 5 is 25. If I subtract that from both sides, 60 minus 25 is 35. Divide by 5, and we get that x is 7. So that was a little bit more of a confusing example, but we really want to know how to work with pictures that have more lines involved. So we'll do some more practice when I see you next, and I'll see you soon. Have a good night.